audios. There we go. Hi, everyone. <laughs> 6.30 a.m. Sunday morning. Oh, my goodness. June 12th, 2022. And this one is really just to get myself booted in the morning. You know, I got my coffee. We're all mad here. A little tea party, but it's coffee in there. And this morning, hmm, uh, the thing that made me inspired to start a live cast is just thinking through my morning process here. And I got to a point where it's like, hey, I just read my comments from my <laughs> flurry of activity yesterday. I'll share that with you. And I did my my thinking through the day, how to get started, kind of like a ritual of uh, initializing, initialization, in it, right? Comes up in computing all the time. We've slept, we've put ourselves to sleep, like these parallels between what humans do and what computers do, they're everywhere. So as a result of yesterday where Zoro Noah 01 had said they could listen to me all day, I'm like, okay, fine, listen to me all day, I'll just talk. And then Ia Konev, just an hour ago, says all day for sure, Keep them coming. Maybe you could tell us something about networking history, IP protocol, or I don't know, Ethernet, how it all came about. Maybe you got a story or two to tell in this field. And I respond, gears are turning. IP routing comes to mind, per the Department of Defense initiative that led to ARPANET. But that's been told so much, so I'm giving thought. And Ia responds, oh, I got one for you. Maybe you know who really invented firewalls? Well, I think nature. I think, you know, the distance between planets and solar systems is, is nature's firewall. It was an, it was an inevitable evolution, but I'll, I'll give it thought. Um, COS checkpoint. The Israeli company kind of, kind of claims they did and I've got my suspicions. Wiki is hard to trust, so maybe you've got something. I'll look into it. I'll look into it. And then the other one, which is more relevant for today, is uh, again from Lyra Ye, who says, Lisp and Emacs sound interesting, though. Sounds like some type of assembler variant. Definitely have to look into it. So that leads to where I'm at, assembler variant. Like, it's very low level. And I am in a reductionist move, a, a reductionist movement because I'm packing, getting ready for a move. And my approach is to just pack and put everything in public storage and then just pull things out of public storage into my new place to find the love worthy bits, to find the parts that bring me joy. Uh, there's a Japanese organization person. Let's see. I'll show her first. She should be Tab one brings joy, <laughs> organize. It's not gonna be hard to find her. She's uh, fairly popular on the internet. That's her. Marie Kodo, Kondo, Marie Kondo. Whoops. Oh, well, that's her book, Spark Joy. So I guess that, I think that's her book, but I guess that really says enough. The idea is you hold something in your hand and if it really brings you joy, those are the things you keep in your life. Things that don't, you don't need so much. And so I'm thinking about my next steps as well. These all go together. And so Google was bound to happen something needs to serve the function of the global digital nervous system. It's not just about search. I am a search engine optimizer after all. And even though it all started with Alta Vista, see, being a technology fan and a search engine optimizer, these stories are very special to me. Alta Vista was one of the original search engines and Alta Vista was from DEC. Digital Equipment Corporation, that same deck who made the PDP 11s where Unix was born, basically. Let me double check that fact. Program Data Processor, 
Let's put that in Instapaper. So you see my process. You're getting insights to my process. Digital. <laughs> Based on digital. Let's see. Who made that? Yeah, it's Digital Equipment Corporation. There, deck. I have it right. So the whole field that I'm in, the love of, you know, search, the love of search. It's not the love of search optimization. I love search. Came from the same company on whose equipment Unix was born. All right. So you see it runs deep. Uh, even though it was Alta Vista and deck, Google is uh, the gift that keeps on giving, right? So if anyone's with me, I'll just uh, pop out your chat. I have no idea if anyone's, yeah, I wouldn't expect anyone really here. This is more for my thinking it through. These are like my old school videos where it's, it's mostly for me. It's mostly for thinking out loud. But nonetheless, if anyone joins in, you feel free to type to me. per our usual process. See how nice AeroSnap is? We don't need no stinking power tools. And I want to be on the receiving end of all those Google gifts, you know, in all the best ways that align to my vibe, my morals, and my aligning mission and purpose, right? In particular, what in the heck do I mean by that? I missed many of the early dot-com grabs, even though I made one. I made one for hire for a public relations company I was working for, and it lasted for 15 years. It had a decade and a half run in it. But meanwhile, all these people were making these money grabs using Google's AdSense network and making themselves into millionaires and stuff. And I didn't do it. It was hateful to me. And I, I hate the whole concept of empire building too. And when I sort of moved to New York and saw that world around me, I was like, ick, yuck. I don't like being held under the sway of money grabbing alpha investor types. They judge themselves and others by money, money, money. And the love gets sucked out of things. I'm sensitive, I'm sensitive, even though it's all green on the screen. It's blue inside, and I'm sensitive to that deflating feeling. What's being deflated? It's the inherent love of things. I love things. I love things. I'm appealed. I'm drawn to things. And the nature, that ineffable quality of these things is fragile, and it disappears easily when the host body gets corrupted, right? These are my initializing thoughts for the day. And this must be why the story of Fernando Corbato's fighting the corruption of computer time hoarding elitists led to multics. And it also must be tied to the feeling of why the corruption of multics by big business leading Ken Thompson to making Unix and then leaking it, which became the Berkeley system distribution. That appeals to me too. And then how Linus Torvalds, what was his motivation? It's like, okay, you got Multics, you got Unix. What about Linus Torvalds and Linux? He didn't have enough money. He didn't have enough money. That's what led to Linux. What better story than that? How, how much more love worthy, how much more love can be infused into a thing than all the Unixes of the days were too expensive. He also didn't like Minix much. There's some historic stuff there. That is, I got to tell that story because they both won. You're running Minix right now, whether or not you do WSL install to get you to get Linux. You're running Minix, a version of Unix. You don't know it, but you are. Unless you're on Apple, then it's going to be something else. And AMD, something else still, but it could still be Minix. I got to look into that one. Okay, so this brought me to here. Why not live cast a bit? Think through your next steps and get it very clear in your mind. So 
people like to latch on to a concept and then they don't let go of it. This can work for you and it can work against you. When it's working against you, it can be a technique of predisposing and an avoidance of accountability. So what you're talking about is really about thing A, but the person gets thing B into their mind and beats you up with B, B, B. I'm like, no, 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 this is about thing A. And they're like, B, 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 B. And they've just closed their minds because they have latched on to a concept and won't let go. That's bad. So it can work for you as well because latching on to a concept can be a technique of rallying resources properly. I'm going to talk about LISP, but to just cross reference and zero in on this, you need to know that there's this toolbox concept. It came from Unix. Unix toolbox is a philosophy, a concept. philosophy four tenets of the unix philosophy hmm interesting small is beautiful make each program do one thing well <laughs> build a prototype as soon as possible it's all interesting stuff this probably covers the toolbox Unix philosophy emphasizes building simple, short, clear module and extensible code. So there you have it. I mean, you know, you're going to see the, the word toolbox used here and, and it's minimalist, minimalist, modular. So in the case of uh, Unix, I guess I ought to write that there. You know, Lisp is one thing. Unix is another, and Unix is this uh, small modular toolbox. So that brings me to Lisp. What about Lisp? Well, <laughs> I'm in a reductionist mood, and that's what started this whole thing, and there's interest being expressed in my mentioning of Lisp. And Lisp is about many things, but at its heart, they've got X S expressions. And this kind of states it. You got a you got a lot of parentheses in Lisp, and the smallest structure you can make in a parenthesis where things relate to each other, where things relate to each other. Because you see, if you're talking about parentheses, if you have just one thing inside parentheses, what does that mean? What are you saying? It means nothing. You need two things. The way in which X relates to Y. Now they put a dot in the middle in this example because you need some way in which they relate. And you know they use the word atom, that's very revealing because it is the smallest unit. This is the reductionist piece in, piece in Lisp. See, they say it's popularized in the Lisp language. I wish they would just come out and, and say it. This is the smallest reductionist piece from which you can build anything. There are two things. If two things are to relate to a third, there's only room for the two things. So instead of the thing here relating to something else internal, becoming a standalone structure, here they have a standalone structure. Two things are relating to each other inside the parentheses. But you can link these together leading to the concept of a linked lisp. 
linked lisp there's a freudian slip a linked list and i guess i should get linked lists up here too here's your s expression here's the item on the left of an s expression the item on the right of the s expression refers to another s expression this is the smallest building block by which you can build anything up this is why flat lists and rows and columns are really just another expression of this kind of thing and this this concept of two things linked together and one side of it being used to bring in a third thing is used all over in tech you see it as s expressions in lisp you see it sometimes referred to as a linked list but you also see it in databases as an associative entity so you got two tables this is a good one right here you got two tables with actors and firms and the actors contain stuff about the actors and the firms contain stuff about the firms they work for and then you've got an associative array an associative table whose only job it is to have a series of records which have an actor's ID referring to something here and a firm ID referring to something here and so by having th these two separate tables living completely apart from each other and then having just this third table you can create a many-to-many -many relationship a many-to-many -many relationship okay many oh there's Bing there's Microsoft trying to get me to use Bing you saw it right there the browser wars many to many relationship it's just another way ex of expressing expressing the same exact idea you'll see similar tables table on the left table on the right associative table in the beginning that contains IDs from the left and IDs from the right so this starts building up things like this and you can create linked lists and all kinds of hierarchical data structures for fancy shapes or flat data structures for rows and columns even rows and columns are built up this way so if you think that there's something fundamental about relational database systems excel tables uh, yeah those are the two sql tables and spreadsheet tables there's not they're they're just another application of linked lists s expressions associative arrays so it's fundamental it's everywhere so what about my thinking this morning what is that how does that even tie into anything well first it's just stimulation for stuff i'm going to talk about it's a contest now between networking stuff and this was just like a half hour ago networking stuff per Ia Konev and uh, Lyra Ye again with following on to their her C questions which are now leading to Lisp questions because if if you're going to talk about something other than C that is formative and important in the world even though it doesn't apply much anymore because no very few people really use Lisp uh, professionally but it's one of these wizardly secret weapons that gets to the heart of things because it's so reductionist it's more reductionist than C if C is reductionist to the way hardware and compilers work lisp is reductionist to the way reality works what have i not shown you have i i've gone through all of these oh yeah so i got a problem i'm just sort of throwing stuff into a single long list right one to the next to the next to the next and you can step through them with previous next arrows that's pretty cool i i really like the way i can step people through this stuff i think that's really important but it's time to organize mike it's time to rethink to revise vision and revision vision and revision i had my initial vision bam i've got a blog system built off of 
GitHub pages and Jekyll, like, boom, right? Didn't take me any time at all. It's all, it's all just bash scripts and stuff. I didn't even use too much Python. If I do B L A S T, blast. It's both the syntax for jumping to the last buffer in my Vim set of files that are loaded in memory, but it's also the name of the file that I use to do the release system. And all the stuff you see here is really Linux, Unix. It's Unix scripts. It's a Unix script. It's the bash flavor of Unix scripts, which are often called bash scripts. It's the same commands as you would put as you would type into a terminal. This is like me typing into a terminal, except with a little light logic put around it every once in a while. And this is the ignition. This is the ignition of the Unix and C world becoming powerful. The fact that Unix scripts allowed automation. These automations were portable between different hardware systems because Unix was portable between different hardware systems. And there's this concept of piping data between programs that's related to that toolbox stuff. In fact, one more thing I'll show you since it's on my mind is, you know, where these concepts really originated. Was it Dennis Corbato that did all these deep concepts? Unix was based on Multic. So did Dennis Corbato invent the piping of data? Mm. Piping. Piping data. Invented data piping. Piping and computing. The evolution of it. In computing, a pipeline, also known as a data pipeline. See, it's not data pipelines I want. I'm going to go to Instapaper. Hopefully I'm logged in because I looked at it recently. Pipeline in Unix. This article is about the original implementation for shells. Bingo, right? So I'm showing you my secrets. I already researched this for myself. I tried doing it off the cuff for you. But here we have it in a... Uh, in Unix-like computer operating systems, a pipeline is a mechanism for inter-process communication using uh, message passing. The concept of pipelines was championed. I'm not sure about invented, but it was championed by Douglas McGillroy, Mc, McElroy at Unix's ancestral home of Bell Labs. Again, it came out of Bell Labs. So this might have been something that was part of the psyche of Bell Labs that Ken Thompson ended up walking into. And so when he looked at Multics, you know, from uh, Dennis Corbato, I mean, from Fernando Corbato, he also looked at these concepts that were floating around at his place of employment, Bell Labs. And he saw this data pipeline concept. So it wasn't all innovation from Fernando Corbato. He brought the time sharing to it. But all these other folks at places like Bell Labs brought these concepts that came together to become the, the Unix way, the principles of Unix. So oh, that'll be a good video. <sighs> B2. All right. And that's pretty much it. Now that brings me to the reductionist. Talk more about Lisp. Linked Lisps, the smallest building blocks, X, S expressions, start at the beginning. Apply it to my blogging system. Use it to organize my stuff, which is not very organized right now today. I need discrete groups of related articles that flow naturally one into the other. I need to change the order so that the, the things that are linked to each other are actually more related to each other topically for the purpose of SEO, of course, but then more importantly, for the purpose of a designed experience. I need 
different linked lists. And regardless of whether I go linear or nested, it doesn't matter. I need to think about it in terms of the smallest possible building blocks. These S, S expressions, even though I'm not using Lisp, the concepts apply everywhere, all right? Categories and tags in the case of blogging systems to organize my posts, and then YouTube playlists play in because why not do the organization in a list manager that already exists that puts things in a perfect sequential order you can arrange it by publishing you can arrange it by manual and then you can use those arranged playlists to organize the pages that are related to it i just need to make an associative array table that takes a google video id on the left and a blog post on the right and the blog post can always be pulled up and the YouTube video embedded into it and magic fairy dust gets sprinkled in and I blow up on YouTube because it can be no other way. There's a very special kind of potential being released. Remember I talk about cutting the ropes of the already wound catapults. This is a cutting the rope and releasing the potential project. This is why I say I know it's really just a matter of me thinking through it to draw in <laughs> all the people who are interested in such things because these are the big projects that make the difference who would not be interested in that and then you you layer in additional things like machine learning how to group these things best perhaps the computers can tell me what my list should be you have no idea what's coming, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm 51 years old. I've been doing a lot of this stuff in the back room, closed door closets of companies. As president and vice presidents, directors, and, you know, these highfalutin titles that sucked the love out of things. I was in these marketing and advertising agencies for, for a decade in New York City. Uh, before that, I was internal. I was an internal person working behind the closed doors at Scala, mostly. Another company that's been wrapped up by the uh, enterprise resource management companies. Uh, I think it belongs to Epicor now, but I worked for Profit21, which made a bunch of resource management software. And it got wrapped up by consecutive companies until it became part of one of the last remaining software companies that still like SAP and Oracle. There's not a lot of them. They used to be the BOPS, Bon, Oracle, PeopleSoft, and SAP. Now there's just SAP, Oracle, and little players like Epicor left. So these, this is, these are my backgrounds. I did work for these types of companies, you know, doing search engine optimization and, uh, and other things. And then I went from that world to doing it for New York marketing companies, which mostly meant producing PowerPoints. Ugh! I had a little bit of reprieve in the form of making this Web 2.0 keyword suggestion tool app for people who are blogging. Here's what to write about. Guaranteed to improve your performance sufficiently that it had a 50, 15 year run, right? So I know what I'm talking about. Here we are in the changing world again. It's not so much about SEO, right? It's not about SEO. Search engine optimization is changing. Search engine optimization is changing and evolving. How? Machine learning. Evolving. Specifically, what are you talking about, Mike? The old ways. Crawl and index, which comes from the database world, relational database world. Well, we'll just say database world. Specifically, when it comes to indexes for fast lookup. Indexes are everything. 
fast lookups. So, you know, everything about SEO is really about these two points, right? And now there's the new ways. Now the old ways aren't going away. They're just being, they, you know, one dial is being dialed down, the other dial is being dialed up until a crossover occurs and it's more a result of the new ways than the old ways. And what is the new ways? Oh, it's hard to even say, but it's definitely data sets being trained data sets, training data sets, training models. Training models, that's probably it. And what does that mean? More things being recognized. Does that make sense? And then answers. Answers. See, I don't want to make it too abstract. Databases, you know, first you gather the data and then you create indexes on it. And then searches are against the index and those searches are fast because there's shortcuts here. There's hash tables, there's fast lookup tables. Fast lookups against hash tables. This is what enables this world. Now there's weird stuff here. I guess answers, things get weird. Okay, how do they get weird? New concepts can come into the picture. Real-time answers based on l learned models. So, you know, let's call it like ad hoc processes, different processes. Uh, six degrees of separation comes to mind. No two people on Earth are more are more than six degrees separated from each other by various you know, uh, people they know. So this concept means that if you had some sort of agent working for you, a, you know, a thinking agent working for you, who could search the net with lightning speed, they're a lightning speed researcher. Now this is not, I'm not saying this is specifically the new way. I'm just saying that things get weird and the rules governing six degrees of separation means that you could have a thinking agent working for you who can research the internet at lightning speeds and come up with a custom answer. Now it's starting to look like that in search, right? You know what I'm talking about, the top 10 world. Every time I do this, the top 10 world is giving way to, you know, something much more like what I'm describing, right? So recently, I keep forgetting the two founders of the MIT lab, right? Founders of MIT lab. These are important people in the rise of, uh, See, this is the modern one. That's not so much. You got these one crazy looking guy, founder, inventors of Lisp, let's say. John McCarthy, he's definitely one you need to know, but he worked side by side with Marvin Minsky. That's the other one. So it's John McCarthy and Marvin Minsky. But look at this experience here. Is this top 10 search anymore? No, no. This is much more like, you know, what I'm talking about with machine learning. It's getting layered in. How to divide the screen between these different things, a quick answer, a knowledge graph, a, an accordion answers. So I'm interested now in the actual answer. I want to see John McCarthy and Marvin Minsky. See, I don't even have to finish typing it. It knows I'm, I'm asking about that. So this will probably be the topic of a coming answer. I've got so much respect and love for these guys. These, these two have created so much of what was important about our world. And when I talk about my love of the Amiga computer, and I talk about 
alternative computer histories, alternative technology histories that could have been. Uh, these two were the advocates of an alternative computing history that could have been, that could have got us to machine learning and more powerful computers and sort of the Isaac Asimov future of robots and humanity uh, more quickly than what we have. I love Unix and I love Linux, but Unix and Linux killed this stuff. Unix and Linux was the, was the branch of evolution that put the kibosh on meta systems, meta systems, software capable of building software, hardware that can be configured in ways that are optimized best for your particular problem domain. What itch are you scratching? Let's evolve a computer and software system to evolve to, to solve your particular problem better than anything else in the world could solve that problem. That's these guys. Uh, but it died. It died out. It's kind of coming back now, but it had to come back through GPUs. It came back through competitive gaming, polygons per second from NVIDIA versus and some other things I need to get down. NVIDIA uh, versus, I think it, back in the day it was Radeon. This was the classic rivalry. I need to talk about that in the future and how this classic rivalry of NVIDIA versus Radeon really gave rise to the hardware that brings back the, uh, the dream of these folks. Talk about untold stories and underlying, you know, driving forces. This is a big one. Sunday morning, of course, no one's actually here first time in a while. That's fine. I'm still broadcasting. I'm still broadcasting. And uh, yeah, someone popped in and out. It's reviews. All right, this is good. This gets me started. My last thing is now these things are on my mind. I'm not going to write and I'm not going to produce the videos, but I'm going to go pack and I'm going to go pack in a reductionist mindset. What's important in life? what's really important in life. All right. I had some notions of what were, maybe they're not right. I've got new information to work with, surprising. So we rethink. You know, remember the 80-20 rule. Reductionism is its own sort of trap. Back off and rebuild appropriately. Decide what appropriately is. Let go of dogmas. If you're not familiar with it, two words, two words you need to know. You need to understand dogma and luddites. <laughs> it's a movie. <laughs> uh. All right. Usually I object to that kind of stuff because the best words are taken over by reality TV, weakest link, shark tank. But I will forgive Kevin Smith. Dogma. A principle or set of principles laid down by an authority as incontrovertibly true. When you find a dogma, you set it free, you release it. That dogma is being held captive. The mind is being held captive. Nothing is incontrovertibly true. 
That's against science. And it's against the problem of induction and Gödel's incompleteness theorem. I believe the I believe in the problem of induction and the and Gödel's incompleteness theorem sufficiently to know that nothing is incontrovertibly true. Stop me before I subreference again. Problem of induction. If you're not familiar with it, it's in philosophy and it's in science. See? It's it's in both. The problem of induction is usually conceived as asking the wrong question. It is asking how to justify theories given that they cannot be just blah, 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 self-referential. That's stupid. Uh, same thing. So basically, your senses tell you stuff. Every observed emo, emu has been flightless. Therefore, the inductive inference is that all emus are flightless flightless so they're they're implying you know uh inferred ver you know they're going to inferred versus explicit kind of stuff but it has to do with our senses we only know what comes in through our senses and our senses can lie to us they're induced everything we know is induced into us through imperfect you know tools and then finally Gödel's incompleteness theorem if you have a consistent logical system then there are statements in that system which are unprovable using just that system's axiom that sums it up. <laughs> it's easier to, to see uh, Gödel's incompleteness theorem than the problem of induction when it comes to uh, any, any dogma is absolutely uh, in question because, you know, nothing is... absolutely true. You have to take it on faith. You have to accept that it's faith when you are resisting uh, change. So then that last thing, I guess, is uh, Ludites. It's a reference to a uh, particular population. Ludites were based, were a secret oath-based organization of English textile workers in the 19th century. But in modern terms, it is a person opposed to a new technology or ways of working. On principle, the unspoken end of that sentence is just on principle, a person is opposed to new technology or, or ways of working. So I'll pop a lot of these things into my Insta paper. Maybe a way I should do this with you folks in the future is just to go through my Insta paper and show the kinds of things that I've uh, accumulated up over time. Yeah, everything that's really important. And uh, that's about all I have to say about that. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. And uh, don't be a Ludite.